It's my pleasure to introduce our next plenary speaker of the morning, um, Professor Xinguang Deng from uh, Peking University. And uh, uh, Xinguang has had a very illustrious career before he went back to China at uh, Yale University, um, where he was a, pr a professor for several years. Um, he was the first person to identify the COP1 gene, which is a, uh, a, a very important regulator of photomorphogenesis in plants. And uh, as a result of that work, he's really developed a, a, a long history of uh, dissecting the whole regulatory pathway of photomorphogenesis. Uh, he is a member of the National Academy of Sciences in, uh, in the US. Um, since he went back to China, um, and uh, I really liked uh, what he wrote about himself, is that uh, one of the things he wanted to do was now, having developed such an illustrious career uh, in plant molecular biology, to give something back to the farmers. And so he, he has looked uh, uh, at, uh, at ways in which not only can he continue with uh, uh, discovery science, but actually to figure out a way of impacting um, a work both in rice and wheat uh, in, uh, in China. So uh, it's a great pleasure to ha have him come and visit. He's come a long way, um, but we're looking forward to hearing uh, about his work on heterosis. So uh, Zig Wang, if you'd like to come to the stage. Good morning. Um, so like today I'm going to share with you some, some research. Actually, it's not happening in the School of the Advanced Agricultural Sciences that I was founded a few years ago, but actually happening outside in the past 10 years with the two uh, research organizations that I, I helped found it. Okay. But before going to my talk, I want to let you know there will be a conference happening on the Agricultural Bioscience International Conference. And this conference actually happening most of the time in Canada. And uh, it's the first time we happen in China. The, this is the website. Uh, hopefully, you guys can remember, can check in. And the meeting, uh, registration started the 15th September this year, this summer. Um, the, the three days presentation, just like the meeting here. And then you can do whatever to do afterwards. There's a lot of good things happening there. So uh, September, middle September is the good time to visit uh, this location. Okay. So today, I think to this audience, there's no need to explain that the hybrid vigor is very useful, uh, it's very common, and uh, it's, it's, it's in our food production, the maize and the rice, also in our research model system. And, the agronomical traits that helped uh, are influenced by the, the hybrid vigor are uh, not only the vegetative uh, growth, the reproductive growth, which actually affect the grain or the fruit were most interesting, but also uh, has a vigor in the stress tolerance or nutritional uh, utilization. So there's many, many aspects that good things happen when you make a hybrid. And that's why the hybrids, this production being utilized uh, almost for a century for the maize and for almost uh, 40, 50 good years for the, uh, for the uh, rice, okay? Um, for the major crops that we're familiar with, the maize and the rice and the wheat and the soybean, as you can see that the ones with the large scale hybrid seeds production. Uh, the growing trend is much steeper than the wheat and the soybean. So hybrid breeding is important uh, empir empirically, as you can see here. So how can do it? For the corn uh, maize hybrid seeds production, now it's relatively straightforward because the male flower and the female flower are very separate. So you can, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the time when the maize are flying, uh, you can hide 
machines as, as well as many high school students go to the field just simply cutting the male flowers of the female plants and then let the pollen from the male flower to pollinate the female plants and then you generate the uh, hybrid seeds. So you don't necessarily need novel technology or biotechnology to do the maize uh, seeds pr uh, production. However, for the rice and the wheat, as many of you know as well, uh, each plant has many branches. Each branch has a, a, a panicle, like in the rice. Uh, each panicle has hundreds of flowers. And each flower contains both the male and the female organ. So it's impractical, impossible to manually take away the uh, male part of the female plants to do the hybrid seed production. And this exact same issue for the wheat and the rice, okay? And this is the, a, a real field for rice hybrid seed production. So you have female, few rows of females, and then one row of the uh, male plants. So trying to use the pollen for the male plants to pollinate the flower of female plants. Therefore, in those female plants, you cannot have the male uh, pollen. So there should be no uh, pollen from the, the, the male plant. So, so, oh, sorry. So it's clear. So in both the wheat and the rice, we do have to have the, uh, the male plant, so the, sorry, the, the maternal parents that do not have the male organs, the, the pollen, okay? So what the technology being uh, used? So the two generation of a technology being used for the uh, hybrid seed production for the uh, mostly for the rice. Okay, uh, the one is utilize the cytoplasmic male sterile mutations. Uh, this is normally called the three nine system. Uh, this is the fourth generation uh, in rice is being started in the middle seventies last century. And wheat also has it too, but it's not very widely utilized in the commercially. Uh, the next generation, the second generation, is the 2-9 system. Okay. The 2-9 system utilizes a conditional nuclear recessive mutation. So at the one condition is male sterile can utilize as a female plant for seed production, but at another condition, it's fertile, so they can reproduce themselves for next year. Okay. So the two major limitations for both technologies. The first generation technology is that the cytoplasmic male sterility requires strict, uh, strictly the uh, cytoplasmic male sterility specific nuclear fertility restoring gene. And those genes are only present in a minority of the rice germplasm. Therefore, the hybrid seed production in this technology is only utilized a small portion of the available rice germplasm. The second generation technology uh, used mostly nowadays is the temperature sensitive nuclear male sterile mutation. So at one temperature, uh, it's male sterile can be used for seed production, and at another temperature, it's fertile, therefore we can have the uh, female apparent propagation. However, because the temperature in the farm it's not controllable. Therefore, the, rep uh, the production of the hybrid seeds of reproduction of the female parents encounter many, many problems in the uh, practice because the temperature always need to higher or lower than what you wanted. Okay. So that's why we need a new technology to overcome those limitations. So essentially, can we propagate the recessive nuclear male sterile, uh, sterile lines, because in uh, wheat, uh, in rice, there are many, many male sterile plants and mutations. Okay, those mutants are perfect for being a female parent, and they are good uh, for making hybrid seeds, and uh, they are not limited to any uh, uh, gene plasm. However, the problem is because they are sterile, therefore they are not propagate, cannot be propagated. So essentially, the technology we needed is to, to propagate the recessive nuclear male sterile mutations, mutant plants. Okay. Okay, so how to do this? And 
always anything new is, is depend on what has been discovered in the past. Okay, so in 92, the plant genetic system, the company, many of you are probably familiar with, uh, actually filed a patent, suggest a great, a, 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 a brilliant idea, basically uh, to, to suppose to, to maintain the male sterile plants, basically to link a pollen lethality gene with the, 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 the male sterile gene, which is the, the Y type gene that is not mutated, the two genes linked together transform back into the recessive mutant background. So in this case, because the any pollen with the transgene will be lethal, so the pollen without the transgene will be fertile and pollinate the, the um, female gamete. Therefore, those plants when selfed will produce the seeds one-to-one -one ratio. One is with the uh, transgene heterozygous, one with, with other transgene. So without the transgene is the male sterile plant, and with the transgene is the same as the parental plant, which will be able to make more uh, female plants in the future. So this is a simple uh, way to propagate the uh, male sterile mutations. However, it's not a practical because it's hard to separate the two kinds of seeds. And in 2002, there was put forward a suggestion, okay, a, 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 a short report, that why we link another gene, the third gene, just not such as a, a GFP or any color mark on the seeds. Therefore, the, the, tra the seeds contain the transgene, not only would be fertile, but they also have a color. And uh, this makes the separation of the two types of seeds, the, the ones, uh, the maternal seeds and the, the female sterile seeds, easily by the color sorting. Okay, so this is 2002. So by 2006, DuPont already filed a patent that demonstrates this idea is fully practical and feasible in maize, and they show it's, it's done in maize. Um, importantly, this technology was, was uh, approved by the USDA as a non-GM food because the female parent does not contain the transgene. Only the paternal, only the, uh, the paternal line of the female parents contain the transgene. Therefore, the food, the F1 seeds, and the, the corn that are produced by farmer are not a transgenic. So this is a great technology. I use the transgenic technology, but produce a non-GM food. So we like to, to do this in the, uh, in the rice and the wheat. So essentially, what we have to demonstrate is to have a male sterile line, the homozygous mutant plants, which don't have any pollen. Uh, we transform three linked genes, the y type uh, male sterile genes, the pollen lethality genes, and the seeds color level genes, all three linked together and to transform the plants in one transformation event. And produce the heterozygous transgenic plants, but it's homozygous for the male sterile mutation. So these plants, will generate the pollen, half the pollen without the transgene, so it's perfect normal. The other half has a transgene, it will be lethal, so it will not be used for pollination. Therefore, uh, the female gamete has two types. One is the transgene, one without transgene. They will, for, will produce two types of progenies but of the self of the maternal plants. The half is the male sterols, okay? Uh, the other half is the maintainer line. So this technology, if it works, will be working perfectly for the rice male sterile plants. And the male sterile lines generated can be used as the maintainer, uh, the maintainer parents, and the cross with any rice variety will generate hybrid seeds. So the idea is very straightforward. And we, we demonstrate that this actually works well in rice, and this system it's clearly better than the, the, the second generation because the, the, the production as well as the hybrid or the propagation of the female plants does not depend on the temperature. So it really eliminates the major problems, the second generation hybrid seed technology. And the, the, of course, the hybrid seeds, both the parents, the male parents, the female parents, and the hybrid seeds are not the GMO. So this actually uh, is, Actually, it is not cause any issue in the society. 
The proof of concept was, was done by uh, 20, uh, 2010, uh, uh, quite a few years back. Uh, this was considered at that time was a major progress uh, in, the, in the government funding agency. So this work was funded by the uh, Chinese uh, Ministry of Science and Technology. Okay. Since then, we, uh, okay, so I already said that, that they overcame the limitation of the one, uh, fourth generation technology because there's no limit for the uh, gen plus utilization. It also overcame the, the major limitation of the second, gener technology, second generation technology because it's no temperature dependency. So the, the limit, the risk of the process, the production process is not an uh, uh, issue anymore. Okay. So we went out uh, since uh, 2010 to produce a commercially viable, useful uh, the, 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 the rice maintainer uh, line. Okay, so we choose a particular rice germplasm that is wide used in China, uh, in southern China, and we went on to uh, mutagenize the seeds, to discover uh, uh, hundreds of new male slaver mutants. So our goal is to find the one without that not being reported by any other people. Therefore, we can have the, uh, the, the, the IP of the entire genes, the mutants, and so on. Okay, and uh, indeed, after hundreds of try. Uh, we find one gene that is very useful. We call it the rice no pollen number one male sterile gene. Okay? And this gene is basically fit all the criteria, and we clone the gene, we prove the gene is a single gene mutation, can complement the phenotype, and so on. And we use it uh, in connection with the pollen nasality and the cis color gene together, transfer into the homozygous mutant background, and generate the maintainer line, I'm sorry, and the, when the maintainer line self, you produce two types of seeds. One with the color, which is the transgenic, which can be used to produce future uh, uh, male cell line. And the one with the normal rice color, which is the male cell plants. And those two can easily be separated by your eye or by a machine uh, without any mistake. Okay. And this. Uh, the, the maintainer line, we produced, the first maintainer line, we produced uh, the pollen, half viable, half not viable. The seeds, as you can see, it's half is transgenic, uh, half is the transgenic with the, the color fluorescences. The half is the normal color, and you cannot see if you're covered with the filter. So basically, it works well as we expected. We used these uh, male sterile plants as the female plants are uh, crossed with uh, thousands, over uh, 1,200 of the rice varieties used as the surface of the paternal line. We find that 85% hybrids are better than any of the parents, the, sorry, are better than both parents, and 10%, 10% of the F1 hybrids perform better <coughs> than the government designated the control plants. So this is really high efficiency to generate a good hybrid pair, because 10% it's much higher. Normally, it would have been one after thousands or after ten thousands would get one good uh, pair. Okay, uh, this is one such good pair, and we actually uh, 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 collaborate with many many breeders and are trying to make. Uh, actually, so far, have collaborated with 130 um, or more breeders to make hybrid seeds, and the hybrid seeds we made by this female parent with other uh, paternal parents, basically produced what we call the high quality rice by the governmental standards. And, okay. So many hybrids are coming along, as I said, and more than 130 organizations of breeders actually use our female parent to breed, uh, use their own uh, paternal lines close to the female lines we have. And we already have one a hybrid variety actually started the, the trial phase one. Okay, so in China, any hybrid variety before the group commercialized have to go through three phases of the governmental trial uh, before it can uh, commercialize. And with this one passed the phase one, and the, the many this year is going through the phase one this year. So this actually is in progress and it looks well. With this new technology, it's very easy to generate new female parent lines simply by crossing the mutation 
as well as the transgene, the two node side, into any rice background. Uh, as long as you, you make it uh, pure, then you generate a new uh, female sterile line uh, in any new background. So this is a, a, a really uh, a fantastic new property of this technology. So it makes the new uh, female parent breeding is extremely easy, uh, can be pro uh, programmed uh, and in batches. Okay. So this is, is so far what we have. So we have one good line, and we're making another new good line. With the good line we have, we're going to incorporate the herbicide resistance, the, the uh, disease resistance, and many other good traits, so make it better. And we're also trying to convert the existing 3.9 or 2.9 male sterile systems okay, into the, uh, with our new, new mutation and the new transgene. Therefore, the, the available um, female parental line from the other system, the generation one and the generation two, can also convert into the third generation technology and for uh, easier and uh, safe use. Okay. So this is the RISE team. Uh, this progress, uh, all the work, or carry out uh, in Guangdong province in Shenzhen city, and the, most of the funds was provided by the governmental support. Okay, this is the rice. Uh, for the wheat, so we basically employ the similar ideas to do the wheat, okay? So basically trying to get the wheat mutation transformed and do other things just like we did in, uh, in rice. However, uh, in wheat, there's not a single male sterile gene is being cloned. So for, we have to start from the scratch. Um, so we have to sort out uh, seed-specific promoters, uh, seed color marker genes, uh, pollen-specific promoters, and pollen ablation genes. The, all those have to be sorted out because no one has done any of those work uh, in maize. We also have to find the, uh, the recessive male sterile genes, and then we have to transform whatever uh, the three gene cassettes into the uh, MS mutant background. So all those had to be done from scratch. So we did, indeed, we tried the color marker genes with, with proper promoters, and we find that the, the GFP or, uh, modified the IFP works well, and we also find the, the proper promoters. Okay, we tried multiple wheat or, 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 or rice promoters, and we found the two promoters uh, particularly working very well with a good intensity of the uh, uh, coloration of the seeds. So those are done. Then we try the pollen ablation. We try several methods. We find at least two methods actually working well for the wheat pollen ablation. Uh, so uh, this is done. And then we have to do, uh, do the gene cloning for the uh, wheat male sterile lines. So before we started, there are a total of five nodes that have been reported. Okay? MS2, 2, 3, and 4 are dominant mutations. They are not useful for us. The only ones are the MS1 and MS5. But MS5, there's only one anneal being reported. Therefore, it's very dangerous, obviously. And we focus our initial attention for the MS1. But before we do the cloning, uh, we went ahead to the uh, larger scale uh, mutagenesis trying to recover many more of the anneal or new loci uh, uh, possible. Uh, we did this in, in the Hebei province uh, with the local government support. We did uh, uh, many acres of the uh, field uh, uh, mutant selection. Uh, in those fields, occasionally you will find a male sterile plant with a good, uh, good eye. Uh, not like me, I cannot see the difference. But, <laughs> You can, see the dif uh, you can see carefully see the difference. Uh, we, in the end, we went through 400, over 400 uh, fertility defective mutant plants. We, we, we uh, analyzed genetically, and we, in the end, we find uh, 32 single recessive gene mutants. Uh, they are 100% uh, male sterile. And we find that among the 32, we find 13 MS1 mutants. So, it's almost double what had been reported in the previously. Okay. So it represents 11 independent annual after we did the sequence, of course, this later on. And we also find possibly three new uh, loci of the MS mutation are different from the MS1, MS5. We also find two new annuals 
for the MS5. So that gives us the confidence. We also should go for the MS5 genes, uh, which we are doing now. Okay. So in the in the in the end, so we we confirm. Um, find more and of MS1, MS5, but we will possibly find three new mutations that may represent either two or three new loci. We should figure out very quickly. And we are actually uh, uh, working on to clone all those genes if possible. But uh, by now, we clone the MS1. Okay? So the MS1 mutants, uh, uh, it's male sterile. This is a normal, normal plant. And uh, going through uh, the mutants, uh, analyze, they are basically uh, defective. The MS1 gene is required for the micro gamet uh, gametogenesis. I'm not going into details. Uh, but after eight years of good work, uh, a, 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 a big group of people working hard for eight years, eventually uh, we narrow down the gene by chromosome working and the sequencing, so on, the combination. A gene into a small region, contain eight of us, and uh, we, by sequence all the NDLs we have, we identify one of the, cell, uh, of the, one of the gene uh, in the middle here, show it here, and we can locate every single NDL have a, a specific either deletion or base pair change. Okay? And this, we confirm, this is the right gene. Uh, this gene was reported uh, later last year. And we prove this the right gene by complementation assays. We transform back this gene into the mutant plant and it's fully rescued the phenotype. Okay. And this gene actually is a novel gene. This is surprising because maize and rice we have found so many male sterile genes. But the first wheat gene we cloned is a novel gene, never been reported before. Uh, it's a small gene of over 200 amino acids. It looks like it has a membrane spanning domain. Uh, has a, a, a targeting domain uh, uh, and also uh, have a, a lipid transfer domain. So we did some uh, cell biology and biochemistry, and we show actually it localized both mitochondria and the plastid. So it's an interesting protein. It's required for the mitochondria and the plastid. Uh, this is interesting. And oh, okay, so we also show actually it has some. Um, uh, biochemical activities for lipid transfer, transfer phospho lipid, possibly is involved in transfer the phospho lipid across the mitochondria and the chloroplast ethanol membranes. So that's what we, uh, we, 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 we have so far. So with this gene, so we have one good gene, one mutant, and also uh, in the uh, last three years or so, the CRISPR gene, CRISPR-Cas technology works well, also works for wheat. So we went ahead to use this technology to, to knock out all three copies of the rice homolog in wheat. So the same gene we use for rice, because it's a novel gene, we have the uh, four uh, uh, patent protection. So we also knock out the rice, uh, the wheat homolog, and all three copies in, in one trial. And uh, indeed, it works well. So all three copies are mutated. You also generate a, a, a wheat mutant plants as no pollen. So we believe this one can also work well uh, for the new technology. So, so together, uh, this is what we have. We have the wheat marker system. So with the promoters together with the purple marker, we have the uh, uh, usable pollen ablation genes as well as the promoter that go with it. We know has two genes, two, uh, MS1 and the, the null pollen gene with the two mutants and the two genes. So we can use both mutants and the genes uh, to do the two hybrids, I'm sorry, to do the three uh, third generation male sterile technology. And we are uh, in the process. It's not done yet, but it should be uh, getting there very soon. So we, we generate the construct with the three genes linked together uh, in one con TDN construct and uh, transform uh, in the process of transform into the uh, wheat uh, mutants. Okay? Uh, in the early transformant, we generated the plants, actually has showed the pollen uh, one, to, uh, one to one ratio of segregation. The uh, functional pollen was the non-functional pollen. And the seeds, the limited number of seeds we generated from those plants, we can see half are color, half without a color. So it looks like the wheat would work out. 
similarly as in uh, rice, and hopefully with uh, with some time so we're able to uh, get this system to work. So I'd, I'd thanks for the WIT team. So I thanks to my uh, collaborator and a long term uh, friend, Li Gim Ma, as the uh, the leader for the WIT team, uh, with a lot of people involved and is working for. Uh, over eight years uh, for this project. Uh, eventually get the gene cloned, get the things moving. So this is really a lot of hard work for many people. And this work is mainly supported by the uh, uh, China Ministry of Agriculture. They have a major transgenic uh, research program. So we, we obtained one uh, good uh, grant uh, for this uh, project. I think that's it. Uh, thank you.